hey everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video i'm gonna explain to you guys this dreadful curve of first aid and by the end of this video we're gonna effortlessly draw it together so let's get started all right guys the first thing i want you to understand is the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure what uh, majorly affects systolic blood pressure is stimulation of the beta 1 receptors the beta 1 re activation leads to increased heart rate and contractility and both of these factors mainly affect systolic blood pressure so whatever increases heart rate and contractility or raises cardiac output mainly affects systolic blood pressure Therefore, guys, in one of these curves of isoproteinol, because it stimulated the beta-1 receptors and elevated the heart rate, it increased cardiac output so much and will also increase systolic blood pressure. And so systolic blood pressure, guys, goes hand in hand with cardiac output. And what factors affect it? Heart rate and um, contractility. On the other hand, diastolic blood pressure is primarily affected by systemic vascular resistance or total peripheral resistance. And so whatever raises systemic vascular resistance will elevate diastolic blood pressure and vice versa. And so those two curves go hand in hand, that of diastolic blood pressure and systemic vascular resistance let's guys draw out what would come out on the blood pressure monitor so what uh, uh, we already agreed that uh, beta 1 receptors primarily affect systolic blood pressure so elevation of heart rate or contractility will elevate systolic blood pressure now what about diastolic blood pressure alpha 1 receptors lead to vasoconstriction and increase uh, total peripheral resistance which will therefore increase diastolic blood pressure on the other hand beta 2 receptors cause vasodilation and this decreases total peripheral resistance and will therefore decrease diastolic blood pressure so both diastolic blood pressure and total peripheral resistance go hand in hand as you can see guys here whatever increased um, diastolic blood pressure is what increased total peripheral resistance those two curves go together all right so when we're going to draw it out it's going to be easy next is the heart rate or pulse alpha 1 unopposed alpha 1 stimulation guys or severe vasoconstriction leads to reflex bradycardia the body is trying to protect itself from hypertension by decreasing the heart rate so it can balance out blood pressure Therefore, whatever causes severe vasoconstriction will lead to reflex decrease in heart rate. And we've seen this, guys, in the norepinephrine curve. With unopposed alpha-1 stimulation, severe vasoconstriction, the body will protect itself to decrease the blood pressure by reflex bradycardia. And the same goes for vasodilation. Vasodilation or beta-2 stimulation leads to reflex tachycardia and we've seen this guys in the isoproteinol curve when there was unopposed beta 2 stimulation and severe vasodilatation the body tries to protect itself from hypotension by increasing the heart rate or reflex tachycardia and so those two curves are opposites guys that the um, total peripheral resistance is opposite to the heart rate curve if there is unopposed stimulation so the two curves that go hand in hand are the diastolic blood pressure and total peripheral resistance the two curves that go opposite each other if there's unopposed stimulation are the heart rate and um, total peripheral resistance Finally, guys, I'm going to talk about cardiac output because this is also mentioned in the curves. Cardiac output is a function of heart rate and stroke volume. So whatever increases heart rate will increase cardiac output. Right, guys? Whatever increases stroke volume by beta-1 stimulation will also increase cardiac output. So here are the two curves of epinephrine and isoproteinol. Because isoproteinol increases heart rate so much, like by beta-1 stimulation and reflex tachycardia, 
it increased the heart rate so much and at the same time the total peripheral resistance is decreased so much by unopposed beta 2 the cardiac output was most increased in the curve of isoproterenol this is because if the total peripheral resistance is decreased so much, the stroke volume will increase, as shown here. And so isoproterenol was responsible for the most increase in cardiac output because of very high heart rate and very high stroke volume. Because the, the high stroke volume because of low total peripheral resistance, low active load. Let's see guys how we can draw these curves together and the difference between alpha and beta. So I'm gonna show you guys now how we can draw these curves from scratch based on what I mentioned. First, you need to know that each of these acts differently on alpha and beta receptors. So norepinephrine primarily acts on alpha receptors more than beta. Epinephrine acts on both equally, alpha and beta equally. And isoproterenol primarily acts on beta receptors more than alpha. Alright, so we already mentioned, guys, that... And in the end, I'm going to mention their effects on cardiac output, heart rate, as first aid mentions. So we already agreed that uh, peripheral resistance curve goes hand in hand with the diastolic blood pressure curve. All right, so we're going to draw the peripheral resistance curve of norepinephrine. It causes unopposed alpha-1 stimulation or vasoconstriction, which means it's going to elevate total peripheral resistance so much. All right, so that's how the curve will look like. And we're going to draw a similar curve for diastolic blood pressure. So it's going to elevate diastolic blood pressure so much as well, just like it elevates um, total peripheral resistance. Right. What about the heart rate? There's going to be reflex bradycardia, right, with norepinephrine. And so the heart rate curve will be low. What about the... Um, systolic blood pressure we know that norepinephrine has at least some beta 1 stimulation and we said that beta 1 increases heart rate and contractility and those affect systolic blood pressure therefore systolic blood pressure will be elevated with norepinephrine which means it elevates systolic as well as diastolic blood pressure and so the mean arterial pressure which is the average of both will also be elevated but will be more towards the diastolic because we already mentioned we already know from physiology that a mean arterial pressure is mainly dependent on diastolic blood pressure because we spend more time in diastole so if we're going to do these for norepinephrine, let's uh, think for that cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. Here, guys, heart rate is low, right? So that's not in favor of an increased cardiac output. But stroke volume here is high because of increased systolic blood pressure. Therefore, if one is high, the other is low, we're going to say that cardiac output is the same. It's not neither increased nor decreased. And we already mentioned that heart rate will be decreased. The mean arterial pressure will be increased. We already mentioned that. What about pulse pressure? Pulse pressure, guys, is the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressures. You see here, all this is the pulse pressure and it's going to be increased it's actually going to be increased in all of them all of them norepinephrine epinephrine isoproterenol have an increased pulse pressure all right guys now let's move on to epinephrine which equally stimulates beta and alpha receptors so we're going to start first with peripheral resistance it causes uh, it affects both alpha and beta receptors equally on the blood vessel so they are opposed and so it's gonna lead to you know a little vasodilation a little decrease in total peripheral resistance but not as much as, as isoproterenol because isoproterenol guys is unopposed 
So it's going to cause some decrease in uh, total peripheral resistance, which will therefore decrease diastolic blood pressure. We already mentioned, guys, that total peripheral resistance curve goes hand in hand with the diastolic blood pressure curve. Now, what about the heart rate? Beta 1 stimulation increases heart rate. There is no alpha receptors on the heart, so epinephrine works on beta 1 receptors in the heart, causing an increase in heart rate. And so how is that going to affect systolic blood pressure? Obviously, an increase in heart rate elevates cardiac output and systolic blood pressure. So systolic blood pressure will be elevated here. What about the mean arterial pressure, guys, will also be elevated because of elevated systolic blood pressure, but not as much as norepinephrine. So the mean arterial pressure will not be elevated much with epinephrine because diastolic blood pressure is decreased, right? Remember, we said the value of mean arterial pressure is closer to diastolic blood pressure than it is to systolic. So it's going to be a little towards the diastolic, so it's not going to be elevated much, even though it's going to be elevated. So in the end, epinephrine raises cardiac output because it increased the heart rate and stroke volume. It acted on beta-1 receptors on the heart, increasing heart rate and contractility, increasing the systolic blood pressure. And at the same time, it decreased the afterload, decreased the total peripheral resistance. So cardiac output is going to be increased with um, epinephrine. The heart rate, we mentioned, is going to be increased as well. The mean arterial pressure is going to increase a little bit. Pulse pressure will be elevated, of course, because of the great difference. There's a large difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressures here, guys. So the pulse pressure is going to be increased. Now, what about isoproterenol? Isoproterenol, imagine guys that it's acting on beta 1 receptors only. It cannot act on alpha receptors. And so in the blood vessels, it will cause unopposed beta 2 stimulation. And so it's going to decrease the total peripheral resistance so much. Unopposed. Therefore, it's going to decrease the diastolic blood pressure so much. And what's this going to do to your body, guys? It's going to cause reflex tachycardia. The body is trying to protect itself from hypotension. And so it's going to elevate the heart rate so much. By the way here, the heart rate is not just elevated because of reflex tachycardia, but it's also because of beta-1 stimulation by the, um, the isoproterenol itself. It causes beta-1 stimulation plus reflex tachycardia. And so it elevates the heart rate so much, and this is going to increase the cardiac output so much as well. In addition to decreased afterload, because it has the lowest total peripheral resistance, all of them. And so, guys, very low afterload, very high heart rate means the cardiac output is going to be increased a lot here. It's the most increased with um, isoproterenol. And the heart rate, like I said, is increased so much. Here, it's the most increase in heart rate. The mean arterial pressure, even though there is some beta-1 stimulation and an increase in systolic blood pressure, yet I told you guys before that mean arterial pressure is primarily dependent on diastolic blood pressure. Now here, or it's closer to diastolic blood pressure. So here, because diastolic blood pressure decreased so much, it will at least decrease the mean arterial pressure a little bit. Because we said that it's closer to diastolic. And therefore, this is the only drug that decreases mean arterial pressure. In all three, isoproterenol is the only one, guys, that decreases mean arterial pressure. All right, now what about the pulse pressure? Now, because the isoproterenol decreased the uh, diastolic blood pressure so much and it increased systolic blood pressure as well, the pulse pressure here will be the highest. 
You got here the greatest distance, the greatest difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressures will be that of isoproteinol, a very high pulse pressure.